Hello everyone and welcome back to CAR Entertainment. I am your host Dylan Hamilton today guys and we are going to be talking about more HE1 biology but this time guys we're going to talk about the eye. Um, we're not going to cover the whole eye in this episode, we still have to do the retina rods and cones, uh, about visual convergence and all that there. Oh, excuse me. But uh, yeah, we're just going to give you a decent uh, overview of the eye, like all the different parts of it now. So we go through the parts of the eye, the iris and the pupil, accommodation, all of the basic stuff uh, to prepare you for basic stuff. So the parts of the eye, basically if you can just know what they are, uh, the all stuff on screen is pretty basic, um, but it's quite a lot, so it can be quite tough to learn, but essentially we're just going to go through them one by one here. So the mammalian eye is an organ that consists of a very large number of receptor cells with accessory structures such as a lens to help the receptor cells work. Now, the first layer is the conjunctiva, which is a thin transparent membrane covering the cornea. It grows to protect the cornea from damage. The sclera is a tough opaque connective tissue that covers the eye and it's replaced by the transparent cornea at the front of the eye. Its role is to protect against damage and it's the site of attachment of the eye muscles, which we'll get on to. Then you have the cornea, which is the front transparent part of the sclera, and its role is to be transparent and this means that most refraction of light occurs here because light gets through and yeah, the most refraction of light occurs there. The aqueous humor is the transparent watery fluid between the cornea and the lens and it's rose to maintain the shape of the front part of the eye. The iris is a muscul 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 muscular layer with both circular and radial muscle which contains a pigment that absorbs light. Its role then is to adjust the size of the pupil to control the amount of light that enters the eye. The pupil is a gap within the iris which is an area through which the light will reach the lens and the enter of the eye. The ciliary body is another muscle Thing that contain, it's, it's another muscular part of the body as it contains a muscular ring of ciliary muscle around the eye and it also has suspensory ligaments that extend from the ciliary body to focus off light, to control the focus of light rays. Its role then is to adjust the shape of the lens and this focuses light rays differently. The suspensory ligaments are ligaments that connect the ciliary body to the lens and they transfer tension in the wall of the eyeball to make the lens thinner, which is important when focusing on distant objects. The lens is a transparent biconcave structure with refractive, pro with refractive properties. Its role then is to refract light and focus the light rays on the retina at the back of the eye. The vitreous humor is a transparent jelly-like material between the lens and the back of the eye and it is to maintain the shape of the rear part of, part of the eye and also to support the lens. The retina is an inner layer of the eyeball containing light sensitive receptor cells known as rods and cones and the role of this is to is a, uh, it initiates impulses and associated neurons when it's stimulated. The fovea is a region in the retina that is particularly rich in cones and it does not contain any rods and it's the part of the eye that gives the clearest daylight color vision. The choroid is a layer of pigmented cells between the retina and the sclera and it's supposed to contain blood vessels that supply the retina and also prevents refraction of light back through the eye. The optic nerve is a bundle of, of sensory nerve fibers that leave the retina and they transmit impulses from the retina to the brain. And finally, the blind spot is a part of the retina where sensory neurons unite to form the optic nerve and leave the eye and they contain no light sensitive cells and therefore they're not sensitive to light. So, the iris and the control pupil diameter. So how does the iris control the pupil diameter? How does it uh, allow different stuff to come in? And I'm uh, sorry, how does it allow different light to come in, etc. So, the iris adjusts the amount of light that enters the eye by a reflex mechanism. Uh, so, and this is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So, we bit like it in the neurons end. So, uh, what the iris can, the reflex mechanism is an, aut is an autonomic nervous system known or in all one is the cranial reflex. These reflexes are protective and they're very bright and but as very bright light will damage sensitive rods and cones by overstimulating them. So, if you look directly at the sun, then your eye, your iris will basically lower that pupil diameter very, very small, uh, which is an autonomic nervous system. Um, which is what the autonomic nervous system will do and then that will basically mean that you're not going to it will protect because it's a reflex and you're not going to take as much light because it can hurt the eye. The iris consists of circular and radial muscles surrounding the pupil uh, and then we're going to talk about how the iris is used in bright light and dim light. So in bright light a nervous impulse will be sent along a parasympathetic nerves and these impulses will stimulate the circular muscles to contract the radial muscles will then relax so the pupil will become smaller and less where light will enter. Essentially an iris in bright light will have the circular muscles contract, the radial muscles will relax, the pupil will become smaller and less light will enter. And this is the opposite in dim light, as when the nervous impulse is sent along the sympathetic nerves, it will stimulate the circular muscles to relax, the radial muscles to contract, which will dilate the pupil, making it wider and more light enter. The circular and radial muscles work an antagonistically, and the second function is to prevent any light entering other than through the pupil. The iris is pigmented, giving the eye color blocking out light.
Accommodation is the focusing of light rays onto the retina from objects at different distances. The focusing will involve the refraction of light rays occurring when light rays pass from one medium to the next having a different density. Most refraction will take place at the cornea, but the degree here cannot be adjusted as the refraction is adjusted at the lens, which is when the shape will be changed, altering the amount of refraction. Changing the shape regularly is, requ is regularly required and it's altered to look at near distant objects. So basically, how, f how far you can see distant or close objects is determined by the lens and how the lens is adjusted, but the refraction of the cornea doesn't do any of that there. It's all about the lens. So whenever you're viewing distant objects, the light rays will be parallel and they will require little refraction to bring them to focus. At distant objects, your circular ciliary muscles will relax, meaning the wider ring will pull on the suspensory ligaments and these ligaments will become taut. These ligaments will then pull on the lens, making it flatter, meaning that it will become less rounded and cause less refraction, which is aided by internal pressure of the eye caused by the vitreo humor helping widen the ciliary muscles and tighten the ligaments. Essentially, all you need to know is that when viewing distant objects, the circular ciliary muscles will relax and this will cause the suspensory ligaments to be taut. These ligaments will then pull on the lens, making it flatter. When looking at near objects, light rays will enter and they'll spread out, and this will require more refraction, which means the circular ciliary muscles will contract, meaning the ring will be narrower and the suspensory ligaments will be loose, meaning they're not pulled by the muscles. The lens will not be stretched as it is elastic, it will revert to the natural round shape, meaning the fatter lens will need more refraction and a sharp focus will be achieved. Essentially, when focusing on a near object, the circular ciliary muscle will contract and the suspensory ligaments will be loose and not pulled by the muscles, and therefore the lens will be a natural round shape. Thanks for watching this video on the AI by CR Entertainment. I'll be Dylan Hamilton and I will see you next time.